For the final problem, I'm going to leave it as a challenging exercise for you. So given that we have solved uh, actually quite a number of problems already, so I think this one here should not be too much a challenge, but at least it will be a small challenge for you. Okay, let me uh, briefly describe what a problem is, and then you can go ahead and document, uh, go ahead and code it up uh, by writing the test cases and also code up the uh, utility methods, okay? Let's now take a look at the problem. Given a, an input array, given a 2D array of integers again, so this problem here is kind of similar to the previous one about square shape and also the previous one about rectangular shape. So it's more like a geometrical problem rather than uh, concerning about the contents of the array. So feel free to make it uh, in a uh, two-dimensional array of strings, two-dimensional array of characters, doesn't really matter. It's really about the shape of the uh, input array. Return a string array of size two, displaying basically uh, index zero of the uh, output array is going to store the lower left of the uh, lower left triangular area of the elements. And the uh, index one of the output array is going to store upper left of the uh, uh, upper left triangle, uh, triangular area of the uh, uh, input array elements, right? That's something I will vis visualize for you. And it is an important assumption we are making. You can assume that the input to the array is uh, uh, of a square shape. Okay, it's going to be, uh, for example, 4x4, four 5x5, four, five five, even 3x4 is not acceptable, right? That's why we say it must be a square shape. So notice that this assumption here. So you don't have to handle any uh, uh, invalid cases for error checking. Okay, let's now uh, illustrate to you what it really means, uh, what we really mean by lower left versus upper left. Let's talk about lower left first. Lower left basically is talking about this particular triangle. So you can think about this triangle over here. So this is the lower left. Yeah, you can see it's kind of the lower, right? It's kind of triangle in the lower left uh, corner over here. Symmetrically, what would be the upper left uh, triangle? Okay, hopefully you can also imagine that yourself. It's going to be this triangle over here. Okay, so this will be the upper left. So lower left and also upper left. Okay. So conceptually, you would know what it really means between lower left and also upper left. But how do you code it up? Let me give you a little bit more hints. You have to really understand the patterns for the loop, uh, for the row and row and call it indices, so that you can really pandemize them using a loop, right? Let me just be a little bit more precise over here. Let's say for the lower left. So that means we're going to print out this element here, this, 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 and also this, 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 this. So this will be the lower left, right? As I explained. What about upper left? Upper left would be one, two, three, four, kind of symmetric. One, two, three, one, two, and also one. Okay, so now let's now talk about exactly how you can pat, uh, uh, observe the pattern for the loop counter. Okay, so this will be lower left and this will be the upper left. Okay, and think about in the upper array, it's going to be of in the, uh, of two, uh, size two. So at index zero, it's going to store the uh, this, the printout of this particular lo uh, lower left. And then index one is going to store the printout for this upper left, okay? Let's now just talk about the lower left, first of all, the blue one, okay? Let me just write down. All you need to do is tell me what, what will be the row and in, uh, row and call it indices for each one of the slots over here? Let's write it down. So for lower left, okay, let me put it here. So for lower left, we're going to get the following pattern. So it's going to be A, zero, and zero, right? What about the, uh, the second row? It's going to be A, one, zero and then a one one okay how about how about the third row it's going to be a two zero a two one and also a two two okay the final row you can see one two three four right hopefully you're still following the third row the row index will be three and then column will be zero one two three hopefully you also see the pattern here and then three, one, uh, three, two, and also three, 
three. All right, let me now make it a little bit smaller so I will be able to talk about its pattern and then suggest how you may implement it. Oh, actually, sorry. Let me do it again. Okay, like that. So this will be uh, the, the idea for lower left over here. Let's now observe the pattern together, right? You can see, what about the row? You can, uh, it's gonna be a nested loop you will need. However, let's see how we can manipulate the loop counter value. Let's say for the row. For the row number, let me use orange. So you can see it will be zero, one, two, and three, right? Where it is one, it's also gonna be one, and also two, and also three. You can think about the orange part is really about the outer loop, about the control of the uh, row indices, right? So this part seems to be quite okay. Just uh, R will be initialized to be zero, and then R will be initialized to be zero, and then you will go all the way to eta length minus one, right? You can see eta length minus one will be up to here. And what about the columns? The columns will be slightly trickier, but it's not so tricky. You can see here, the upper bound for the colon does not seem to be bounded by the length of each individual array in the uh, second dimension because you can see we only go up to here rather than here. So here we go only go up to here rather than here and etc. right? So what should be the upper bound? Let me only circle, uh, only highlight the upper bound over here. You can see here, upper bound is zero. Upper bound over here is one. Upper bound here is two. Upper bound here is three. So now, do you know, uh, observe any pattern over here? It seems like for the colon, the upper bound is simply just uh, the upper bound, the upper bound of C, the colon uh, loop counter is simply just R. You can see the two over here is just matching the two over here, right? You can see the match over here. All right, so that's my hints for printing uh, for displaying the lower left. And of course, you can simply uh, create a single string uh, that will actually uh, try to put in this particular rectangular shape. You can definitely just try to put a new line in the string after every row. That's a little bit uh, technical detail. And maybe for the last row, you don't really put any new line. I'll leave you to write a test case, okay? All right, so that's about the uh, lower left. What about upper left? Upper left will be, you will follow the same technique to really observe the loop patterns and then patternize it using a for loop. Uh, hopefully, uh, uh, actually, presumably nested loop. Why don't we try together quickly? Okay, I might just have to make this a little bit more uh, smaller so I can fit in uh, the upper left. Okay, let me now do it. So what about upper left? So let's now say, talk about upper left. All right, so for upper left, you can see it's kind of a symmetric. So we here, the first row, we got one, two, three, four. So we got A, zero, zero, A, zero, one, and then we got A, zero, two, and then A, zero, three. That's the first one, right? Let me just uh, make a little bit of space, otherwise I will actually reach the bottom very soon. Let me just put it here. Uh, you know what? Let me put this a little bit up over here. Okay, so that should be enough space for me. Okay, what about the second row? The second row is going to be one, two, three, right? It's going to be A, one, zero, A, one, one, and also A, one, Two. All right, what about third rows? Two elements here. There's going to be A, two, zero, A, two, one. And let me just make it smaller over here and we can fit in the final row quickly. Make it smaller. Okay, like that. All right, what about the third row? Uh, the last row, just one. So that'd be A, two, zero. All right, let's now, let's now try to observe the pattern so you can do the job of patternizing them using a nested loop. Let's now, again, let's see the loop, uh, loop counter for R, for the row. You can see zero, one, two, three, right? You can see zero over here, and also one over here, and also two. So it seems like the weight, uh, the, the outer loop should be initial, uh, should be uh, defined, should be the same, right? 
it would simply say r initialized to be zero and the upper bound should be a dot length minus one right you can see a dot length minus one will be the last index over here what about the uh column indices it's very similar to what, what we saw in the in the lower left case but let's see we got zero uh, let's see the upper bound three two one zero right so when the row is actually let's see this when the row is actually uh let me use this here when the row is actually zero and the upper bound is actually three for the uh, column index when row is actually one and then the upper bound is actually two right and when row is actually two and the upper bound is actually one and when the row is actually two the upper bound is actually zero so now do you see any formula over here right so now if you if i say upper bound upper bound over here of c it is equal to some expression over here so how would you fill it in once you figure it out you're done all right I'm gonna give you the solution for sure. However, why don't you pause the video and work out exactly what should be put in into this box over here before I, uh, you will think about it before you go over my solution. All right, assuming that you paused the video and thought about it, let's now put it in. What should it be? So three over here, what's the relationship between three? Three is simply equal to maybe the length, right? You can see the uh, the only thing that we can really uh, use in, uh, for, for any general input is about the length for this particular row and for this particular row and for this particular row, right? So why don't we try this? So it would be something like A at, let's say, only say this one, for example, right? This will be for column zero. So for example, A zero over here, dot length, which will be four, minus the current value for R, which is zero. Right? A zero dot length would just be four. So four minus zero is only three. So we still uh like a one short, so it should be minus one. So this is only the case for the first row over here. But we want to generalize it, so you should really replace uh by doing the following. So now rather than zero over here, you should really say R over here, and rather than zero over here, you should really say R. So that'll be the formula, right? All right, guys, I think uh, this uh, exercise over here, over here is a, bit, a little bit more challenging. However, I think it will be a nice exercise for you to really uh, really visualize the, uh, the output yourself and try to uh, observe the pattern for the loop counter. I think that's the main learning outcome for this particular exercise. All right, that'll be it. Okay, uh, so now we have done uh, many problems this week for 2D, 2D array and combined with uh, the previous week when we actually uh, solved that uh, console application for calculating the mileage uh, distance. So hopefully this will give you a nice and comprehensive, well, not really comprehensive, but nice and in-depth uh, introduction to 2D arrays. All right, so that's it for week number 11. So we got our final week uh, tutorials to come. Okay, take care and then I'll see you uh, next week.